let's check some. They're getting there. Next day or two. Annette Wiles is checking on the yellow inside a hops cone. The yellow inside is called lupulin, and that yellow is what gives the hop the flavor. And that flavor is what craft beer makers are looking for. Hops are either used for bittering or they're used for aroma in a beer. So similar to a grape, uh, where you have certain varieties, uh, hops are the same. Two years ago, Wiles and her husband decided to make a big investment in one of the essential ingredients of beer, hops. As craft beer started to get popular, people started to look into growing it more in a lot of the non-traditional growing areas. The traditional growing areas are identified as Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Uh, they've been growing hops forever there, and they've, they've had the market for a long time. While craft brewing has grown and thrived across the country, hop production has been slow to follow. Although the climate and soils of the Midwest might be good for hop plants, there have been other obstacles. The barrier has been equipment. When we started to look into getting into growing hops, we found that there's big scale equipment that is 300 plus acres. And the smallest equipment that we could find was about 150 acres. That's like a fifty dollars to $60,000 piece of equipment that you could get from Germany. In a land of corn combines that can cost more than $300,000, that may not seem like much. But the Wiles had a hard time finding equipment. Harvesters are being bought up by other producers looking to get into hops. The Wiles had this harvester, a German-manufactured wolf, shipped from overseas. And right now, the machine is still too big for them. To date, the Wiles only have 13 acres in production. Today, the wolf is suffering from too much moisture after a recent rain, which offers a good illustration of the difference between a hand-harvested hobby crop and mass production. It'll take 15 people four hours, what the machine will do in one hour. Once hop cones are harvested off the vine, that's V-I-N-E instead of vine with a V, producers need lots of space to dry them out. You also need a bit of time and a watchful eye on moisture levels. Similar to coffee beans, if you dry them too hot, too fast, you'll burn the oils and then you've ruined your crop. So being able to see how light and airy these are in green, um, knowing that we've dried them down really slow, uh, this is what the brewers like to see. Large-scale hops production also requires another cost. The Wiles built this machine for the final step of drying. One of the big challenges we found in this part of the country is during the harvest season, the humidity levels are so high that we have a hard time drying them down. We have a fan and a heater a propane heater here, so we add heat to them up to about 135 degrees. Um, we don't want to get them too hot, otherwise you start to break down the oils. After the cones are dried, they can be packaged and used whole. But most brewers prefer hops ground into pellets. Pelletizing requires an additional investment in specialized equipment. A bag of dried whole cones is four to five times the volume of the equivalent pelleted product. In the world of Midwestern agriculture, hop farming operates on a different scale. When you're used to, you know, somebody talking, I got 400 acres of soybeans and corn, you know, well, 400 acres of hops is humongous. Even with all these investments, the yields from Nebraska hop producers are tiny compared to their counterparts in the Pacific Northwest. And hop plants don't reach their peak production for at least three years. So as they invest in equipment and build a new commercial hops processing plant, the Wiles are still trying to figure out what grows best in their part of the country. We have 23 public varieties that we have growing here. Our goal is to see what grows well in Nebraska, what's disease resistant, uh, drought resistant, and pest resistant. Of course, they'll need to get that harvester back up and running as well. For Harvest Public Media, I'm Ariana Brocious.